Hello, welcome. I see a couple people in the queue already. That's great. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, Dana and Deb, thank you. Good to see you again. Um, I've got a fun show tonight, I think. I'm excited about it. I'm going to paint another winter scene, another snow scene. It is winter. In fact, we're going to get a, a snow um, looking out my window here. It's already snowing. It's supposed to be pretty, uh, pretty crazy the next day or so, so we'll see. But anyway, I'll keep painting snow because I don't really feel like painting snow in the summertime. So when we get around to spring and summer, I'll get out of the snow scenes. Um, so tonight, I've got an exciting uh, painting I'm going to do for you guys. I really, I've got a great photo reference, and um, I think I'm going to be able to punch that up with some color and make a good design. So I'm excited to uh, to share that with you. I see Cat. Hi, Cat. Thanks for joining. And Phil, thanks for joining again. Gosh, you guys are going to have to meet each other and uh, and be friends. You're, uh, I bet you'd all hit it off pretty good. So I'll get started here in a minute. Um, I'm posting regularly. Wow. You know, I was talking to my family about maybe running out of ideas um, and worried about running out of ideas. And just before this, my son says, well, perhaps maybe you should um, should drink. So <laughs> get a wine or something and have a camera on your face and uh, basically over an hour and a half drink, uh, you know, a couple glasses of wine and see how your painting goes. So I don't know that I'll do that. Don't want to make... Uh, yeah, make a fool of myself. But anyway, I have a little sprite here and um, I'll get going on the painting here. You can see the setup behind me. Um, I'm going to paint an 8x10 and it is uh, universal primed linen. Same thing I painted on last week. So without further ado, let me switch that over. Okay, let's get the show on the road here. Um, I'm going to use a little painting medium tonight. It's uh, the Neil McGilp from Gamblin, and uh, it's called a thixotropic medium. Kind of a, a cool word, I think. Thixotropic just simply means that it's a gel until you shake it, and it'll liquefy for a little bit, and then it turns back to a gel. So it has a really nice body and feel that it imparts into the paint, so I like that. Uh, let me get a painting or a paintbrush here. I, I like these, uh, you know, these leading lines in of the snowbank in the foreground. Hi, Avery. Thanks for joining. That's my beautiful daughter there online. What a sweet art. So the water here is really going to be interesting in the, you can see, actually the photo reference is really good. It's got all the elements that I want. I'm changing the design a little bit here, but I've got some really dark darks in the trees. The snow is going to be light, of course, and then I've got a mix of that in the water. So I'm excited to paint to that. It's a fun scene to paint. So let me get started here. I'm going to start with a, uh, a synthetic brush. This is a Rosemary & Company Ivory. And let's see, i got to think about what I want to paint first. Um, I, you know, you guys have asked in the past, how do, I did, how do I decide what color to paint first? Well, I've got some white here, and I don't want to contaminate that. Um, so I might get a little bit of that white into play here first. But I'm going to actually, pretty common for me, is to get, um, to get my trees in. I like having that dark, so I'm going to do that first. Uh, my tree color, I'm going to go in with an ochre here. And my cobalt blue. And we'll get a tree color going here that I like. Cobalt ultramarine. This doesn't have to be spot on to begin with, but I do want a nice, a nice dark. And it's going to be a, a bit on the cooler side. All right. So I, I've kind of laid out here, what's easy to do is just put some, um, if you can see these lines where I've put the, basically the trunks of the trees, and I can kind of space those and, and adjust the heights and sizes so that, um, you know, it's not too repetitive. Seeing it as lines like that kind of helps you remind you, helps remind me if I'm getting too repetitive. And I'm just gonna scrub these in 
like I have in the past. Now watch my brushwork. I got a nice email from uh, somebody that has watched the videos and she said, your brushwork is really nice. And a lot of new students probably are missing that because they're paying attention to what's going on on the screen, you know, on the canvas. And I think that's exactly right. So um, I'll try to point things out as I go. But, um, you know, a varied or changing your brush stroke direction and, and how you apply the brush strokes adds variety. And um, you can describe the form by moving the brush in different directions across it. So you'll see me painting, um, you know, with the brush upside down, I scrub on the side, all sorts of things to get different brush marks. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna make this whole side a dark shape. I like that because it keeps the viewer in here as well. Now, as I go to the trees on the left-hand side, I'm gonna change that mixture up a little bit to just feel a little different in color. And see, I'm doing this kind of downward brush stroke back and forth. And, um, you know, maybe that's mimicking, hopefully that's mimicking some of the, the direction of the, um, of the branches there. And I'm going to keep all of these pretty dark. I'll go back and adjust uh, these um, trees and shapes as I cut in the sky there. So not to worry about that. But right now I just want to get that shape correct. And I'm trying to ha avoid having a tree right in the middle of my canvas here. So I'm watching that a little bit. And I don't want the spacing of the trees to be too even. But I can also fix that down the road here if I do make that mistake. See, I've got two trees that the, the tops are really similar. I'll have to fix that when I put the sky in because I don't want that. Okay. So uh, those are some darks and I've got some snow that's going to come right up against there. I've also got some uh, little shrubs along the shoreline there that I want to make sure I keep um, or I put in that'll be uh, an opportunity to add some other color. And I need to switch my brush to another color here. And just to remind you, when this is on here, if I scrape down with my palette knife, a lot of that stays, a lot of the color stays on the, uh, the linen here. It absorbs some of it, but I can scrape most of it off. And I'm scraping a little of that extra paint off because I do want this to, um, I'm going to come back in and define these trees here in a little bit. Okay, now the, the next thing, um, the next thing to, actually I'll come back to that in a minute. Sorry, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here. Let's go ahead and put a little snow in here. We'll get that going. I probably, I'm going to clean my palette off a little bit here. I wasn't thinking ahead too much. I'll keep my darks over here on the left and enough mixing space on the right so that I can keep my whites clean. It's really worth it. Uh, you know, wiping this palette down, making sure it's clean because any little bit of that other color, even as a residue on the palette, will tint your, um, or contaminate, I should say, your white. All right, so the title of this was Painting Colorful Snow. And it's really about more than just that. I might change the title when I post it, I don't know. Um, but I really enjoy painting snow with color in it, you know? You think snow has a lot of uh, um, white, or, or as white, but it's really not. It's, it's lots of colors. It's reflecting light all from all over the place. 
and such. Now I have a guest color over here. I don't know if I've talked about guest colors. I have my normal palette, which you see every week. And then I've got some spots over here on the lower portions of the palette where I can have um, a guest color. And I've added a phthalo blue today because it's a greenish blue and it's a high tinting strength blue and just gives a really nice color for these, you know, kind of crisp um, snow scenes here. So I'm making a little pile of that. And um, I'm going to use my palette knife here and mix another pile up of some slightly different color here of snow. Might have gotten a little heavy handed on that. Well, if y'all remember Hershey from past weeks, he's out in the hall today, but he's scratching the door to get in. I think he is really jealous of this time. <laughs> today when I was setting up beforehand, he was um, in here on his chair and just would not leave. I think uh, he somehow knows what's going on on Tuesdays. Kind of funny. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm mixing up three different tints. I have a blue, a red that I'm mixing now, and um, this orange. And I'm getting them about the same value, or trying to. And I can describe a lot of the changes in uh, planes in the snow with these colors here by changing the color that the snow is. So that's what I really want to share with you tonight. Okay. Everybody doing all right? I guess if you couldn't hear me, you would have said something by now. So I'm thinking that's a good sign. Okay. Now I need to just decide here how I want to light these snow banks. So I think basically over on this one here, I'm going to have a a pretty, uh, you know, a cool bank of snow. Now, as I go up into these trees, I'm picking up some of that tree color there. And I don't love that, so I'm just going to do just enough. I don't mind the soft edge, but I don't want all my snow to have that color in there. This brush here is a uh, Princeton Aspen. I like these. It's a long flat, and uh, it's a synthetic bristle. It's kind of soft. You can see it's very floppy when I put those brush strokes down, so I don't know about that. I think uh, a short flat would have been, or a bright is another term for that, would have been maybe the better choice for this snow. But that's okay. That's all right. Put a little medium in here just to make that flow. And I think as I go back here into the snow. I'm going to put some of that blue in the front and maybe around here, that front edge of the snow bank. And then what's really fun is this bank of snow, this little, um, uh, basically it's the edge of the, the river. Uh, there's snow and ice there in the rocks. And, um, you know, and this can be a really, a really neat place to put some color shifts. And basically what I, I already have a concept in mind here, and that is I'm going to make my sky more of an orange. And so what's going to happen is that, um, the, the top planes of the snow that are reflecting that sky are going to be orange. And then stuff that uh, edges of the snow, like this bank right here, that turn away from the, the orange sky are going to reflect the other part of the sky, which is likely to be blue. And so um, that's an easy way to show three-dimensionality and add a great ton of interest to it. So that's really a fun thing to do. I like doing this. Um, and I'm trying to stick to my drawing here. I'm not always very good about that. I, I mean, yeah, I am, but it's kind of fun to ad-lib a little bit. 
Okay, I'm gonna get a different brush for my other snow colors. And I'm just gonna block these in and we'll adjust here in a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think all of this snow in the foreground here can be, I'm gonna start with some broad strokes of this orange color here. And then I'll modify that as I go because I probably don't have it exactly right. And I'm trying to not pick up too much of the blue that's down there. I'll integrate those things in a little bit. At least that's the plan. So that looks pretty wild, I'm trying to look at what the view you're seeing as well. And like always, you just got to stick through to the end and see how the painting kind of comes together and have faith it's going to going to look good. So um, you can vary the intensity of the color like I am in this orange. I, I just added a little more orange to it. Um, let's see, I think this back snow bank here, I'm just going to get I'm just looking for no, nice notes of color. I'll refine the drawing as I go, but if I get these big blocks of color correct and I'm getting what I hoped out of it, then um, I can adjust everything else. Okay, so I think, um, I think it's probably a good idea at this point to, since I've got orange on my brush, to go ahead and create that sky and get that intensity where I want it to be. So I'm going into the orange and I'm also going into the yellow in this one. And I don't, it can't, yeah, I don't want it too chromatic, but I do want it to be um, clearly not a blue sky. I think that's a way in a painting to add a little more interest to it is, you know, try some other, try some other things like a blue sky. Um, Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put a I'm also gonna put a mountain back here. So I'm going thick with the paint, just getting paint on my canvas. Um, that might make you guys nervous. It is a different painting experience, and you you kind of commit. So I think sometimes that can be a little bit scary to um, put a loaded brush of of paint on. But remember, you can always use your palette knife and get rid of it. I'm just testing things out right now. Now see how I, I, I with those dark trees I'm picking up. Oh, and I want to, I'm picking up the, uh, the dark of the tree color into the sky and I don't want that. So it means I have to keep reloading my brush. Before I started tonight, I went out and I, I relayed out clean, fresh paint. And uh, that's a really important thing to do. Don't starve your palette. Because then you just fight it. You don't have enough color on the whole time. And you're trying. Um, and folks, I'm talking from experience here because I do it every time. I'm too lazy. I think I'm just going to start painting. If I need paint, I'll get some more out. But then when I get to those mixtures that need it, I think, ah, I got to stop. And now I'm in the flow of painting and I have to stop and put more paint out. So it's worth just, eh. it is worth getting a good start. If you're going to paint a painting of any size, just start out with some good piles of paint. I know it's expensive and we all worry about that, but it really isn't. It really isn't too bad. A tube of paint lasts quite a long time. If you buy the bigger, bigger size ones, especially. Um, and then when you have a lot of paint on your palette, you're uh, likely to actually use it. So I'm really struggling here with the, the paint picking up. So I'm going to fight that, I think, this whole time, and that's okay. I did it to myself. 
Because see, if I'd started with the light sky and then I try to paint the trees, I have the same problem in the other way. I mean, those, those nice dark tree colors that I want start to pick up. Um, you know, all the, the orange from the sky. Sometimes that's okay. It's not a big deal. You prefer to have it that way. I just made a decision to go one way versus the other today. Neither way is completely without peril, I guess, for lack of a better word. Okay, so the sky is really orange. And I'll probably want to knock that back a little bit. That's okay. Not really knock it back, but add add some other colors to it. So, for example, let's see. If I go over here and I make a nice kind of a more of a, a lizard permanent purple, and I drag that into this, I can get some really cool marks and a nice blending of paint. Might work or might not, but I can try it. Seems a little dark right now. But that's all right. Okay, I'm gonna switch here, get another brush. I'm gonna put in some of that. I've got a background mountain in there that uh, looks really dark. It's more of just a line in the photo reference, but um, I'm going to make it a yeah, kind of a muted violet. So if I use, if I wanted a really purple, purple purple, I could use ultramarine blue and a lizard permanent. They're right next to each other and both share a lot of blue and red, um, a cool red for this. And it, the blue is also uh, leaning toward that lizard permanent. So I get a really deep purple with that. If I want a more grayed down purple, then I'd choose a warmer red, my CAD red light in this case, and maybe even a warmer blue, and I'd get a much more, they're further away on the color wheel, so I get a much more muted um, purple. And I'll do a video on that separate. I didn't, don't, I'm not able to illustrate that so easily right here. Um, that's another lesson, but just keep that in, in mind. That's why I've got this palette with two reds and two blues and two yellows. One leans warm, one leans cool. So Kat's asking, are you thinking of a particular time of day or weather condition in your color choices? Yep, I am. I'm thinking of late afternoon when that sky, the sun starts to go down and the sky um, to the east. So uh, this is, I was out here taking these pictures and I did some field studies of this actually. And so the sun was to my back um, everything really was in shadow, but the sky in the east turned this great, beautiful um, orange. Not this much. I'm pushing that up. So I'm replicating that, Cat. Thanks for asking. Okay, so I'm going to put in some of these mountains. Now I can go right over the tree. It doesn't matter. I can come back to that. I just got to get the value where I want it. I probably want them a little more blue. Okay. And I want this because um, this is going to help add depth to my scene. And notice I'm just going right into the trees. I don't really, I'm not too worried about that. Some of this will show through when I go back through the trees. Other, other little bits of it will just be covered up again. And thick paint, this is, you know, I'm really loading it on here. I want it to be interesting. I don't want it to be too, too perfect there, but okay. Now let's go back in and, and work a little bit on the water. Now notice what I'm doing here is I'm working an area just a little bit, and then I'm moving to another area. This is important because um, you can get too bogged down in one area. You don't want to do that. Okay, here's what happens. When you have a dark that's reflecting into water, 
it tends to get a little bit lighter. Okay, the dark reflecting will tend to get a little bit lighter in the water. A light reflecting in the water tends to get a little bit darker. And it's just because water is absorbing those light rays. Wavelength, whatever the right way to say that is. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing up a color for the water where these trees are going to be. And I want it just a little bit lighter than those trees. And these nice dark trees, they make such a great shape um, from which to, you know, put up against that lit snow and make that, that snow really nice. So I'm just, I'm just putting a shape in right now. I don't know if I like it quite yet or not. That seems kind of big, actually. Um, I'll, but yeah, I can adjust it. And again, as I, as I move around, I'm going to adjust that color a little bit. I can put some warmth in there later. I can do all of that as I go. There's a nice, well, let's see, I guess. i got to look at my photo reference. Yeah, some nice dark here. And probably a little more blue than I've put in there right now. It's kind of green. Okay. And then there's this, you know, there's a pattern. So I'm going to follow these trees down and I've got definitely one there that's showing some of this. Uh, this guy here. And see what I am just did to myself? I put these darks down again. I'm going to have to paint some of the lights in here as well. So no matter where you go, you're going to have this struggle. And so what I'm kind of looking for here is I want a pleasing shape of the light, the skylight, in, um, in the water too. So I'm looking at that shape overall, this dark shape, how it kind of ebbs and flows. Hey, that was a water reference and I didn't even mean it. Uh, and just how this shape's going to come together here. Okay, wow. Looking pretty rough, isn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and put some of this sky color into the water. And, um, yeah, the angle, what I find out in nature is that the, the background mountain is, is the angle of refraction, I think it is, um, doesn't reflect necessarily that mountain because it's way off in the distance and it's too low of an angle. So it usually picks up more of the sky and, uh, and doesn't really pick up some of that. I might put a little bit of that color in there just to, just to have it, that purple color of the mountain. But right now, let me just get some of these little shapes in here. funny, these um, painting sessions seem to go pretty quick, but honestly, I could paint much longer on a piece. Well, let's see here. And in fact, so after I'm done with these, if the painting turns out, then I'll spend more time just adding those little touches. If you're wondering about what I do to finish a painting, I did a video uh, a couple of weeks ago on how to finish a painting, and I talk about um, a painting I did and compare where I left off uh, from the live stream, and then the little touches that I do. Those little touches, though, they can take a long time, and you really don't notice much difference. So 
um, kind of a boring thing to watch, honestly. But the video isn't, because what I did is I just show you the picture of the before and the after, and I just talk about it. So you get the, the benefit of seeing all of that in a much shorter period of time. How's that for selling it? All right. Now I'm just doing big shapes here. Stick with me. I don't even know if this is going to turn out. <laughs> Looks pretty, uh, pretty basic, doesn't it? Okay. So, um, this is where I'm, you know, in my reference, you see a blue sky and it's, uh, you know, it's gradating from a highly reflective sky toward the trees there. And then as you get to the foreground, you see little rocks and stuff in there. I don't think I'm going to mess with the little rocks and all that. That's going to take too long for a, a live demo like this, really. Um, I got to pay a little bit more attention and not be talking and just kind of focus on that. I've put a couple of the rocks in the foreground here, so that's no problem. But I think realistically, um, trying to give the effect of transparent water and seeing the the uh, the water at the or the rocks behind it or below it are pretty unreasonable for me to <laughs> try that tonight too. Okay, let's see. I need another brush here, yet another. Grab some of this. So as as I move on here, I have these piles of color still, right? So as I want to go back to the mountain in the back, I've already got a pool of color here. It's not enough, but I can mix right next to it and get something that matches it pretty darn quick. Or I can grab way too much cad red light and, and overdo it, but that worked out all right. Okay, so I, I do probably will put a little bit of this, you know, a little purple shape in here. Okay. And then I'm going to move forward in the water here and I'm going to bring in some of this, some of this, the reds that I put in the sky up above as well. Now I normally don't paint this fast. I, I do. Honestly, when I'm painting uh, by myself, I will take more time to consider these things. So um, that could be, sometimes it's a benefit when you, when you are trying to rush a little bit because you rely on your skills and what you've learned rather than, uh, rather than analyzing everything too much. And so you can get some spontaneity from that. That's really nice. So I'm painting this kind of a, uh, a lizard permanent. I'll come back into this. I'm not going to get too close to the rocks. But as I paint that, I can bring my brush up into the orange and get a nice gradation. Or uh, I can just <clears throat> take my loaded brush up here and bring it into the orange, pick up a little bit of it, and not really mix them up too much. Bring a little of that orange down. That's kind of fun. You get some variation of color, and it looks pretty good. You know, another thing you can do sometimes is maybe you get it a little too thick, and you're wondering if that's too thick. Well, you can scrape that down. You could pick up some of it with your palette knife and mix that way. Just see what you get. You get some really cool marks and such that way as well. Look at that. And so by taking off some of that um, paint that I had on the edges here, that might help me paint those, uh, paint, integrate the edges between the bright side of the water here and the actual trees that are darker. All right, let's see, where am I? <clears throat> 
So I think I think I'll go ahead and put in some of the uh, I need another brush. Some of those little willow shrubs on the water's edge. Because these are a nice way to add a pop of color too. And they're oranges and reds basically, so I'm going to mix up. I'll take them a little more to the red and the uh, alizarin permanent side because I've already got enough orange in the sky. I could even go with some yellow here. That could work really pretty well too. I'm going to start my mix more on the, the darker blue-purple side because the base of these trees, which are kind of hard to see in the reference, but they're usually darker. So, uh, try to put some of these in here. and just get the baseline. Again, these are, you know, the sun has gone down and um, all of this stuff's pretty much in shadow. Even though it looks pretty bright in the reference, there's no direct sun on any of this at, uh, any longer. Um, and I don't want to have, I don't want too repetitive here, so. Let's lighten this mixture up a little bit. Maybe come into my yellow a little bit more. Yellow and white. And then, um, yeah, these are kind of delicate. I'm not going to put a whole lot of detail into them. But I do want to kind of get them placed in here and looking looking like they belong. Now what I'm doing here is I'm blurring that edge. I'm getting a nice soft edge. Edges are really a powerful tool and they can be a little bit difficult to kind of comprehend and wrap your mind around I think sometimes. But um, you want a variety of edges in your painting just to add interest. So soft edges like this is a soft edge. Um, some of these really stark high contrast areas that are not blended, that's a sharper edge. Those typically draw um, your attention. Now, I'm, look at how I'm holding my brush. This, this may or may not work, but basically at a very low angle to the panel with a lighter um, mix of paint on here, I'm kind of dragging that paint on. on. And then I don't want that to all be the same yellow, so I'm going to add a little red to this guy over here. And keep in mind, I've still got a lot of other areas to paint, so I may um, may actually lose some of this stuff. We'll see. And they're kind of looking like little potatoes. But in that video where I finish a painting and I, sh I show you the difference between where I ended the live stream and how I finally finished it, these are the kind of things where I take them from looking like potatoes to shrubs with just, you know, some accent darks, um, bringing up some foliage, some little leaves that might stick up or bringing some carving into it with the dark shape of the tree. Um, you know, those are all little refinements. You don't really notice too much of a difference in the shape and the design of the painting. In fact, none. It's just all small little refinements. Okay. And then I think over here, I've got a yellow shrub I'd like to put in here maybe. Um, I might even have a kind of an ochre something over here just to um, let me look at that photo reference. There was something over here. Maybe you can't even see it now. I probably shouldn't put this in now because I still need to adjust my whites. That's all right. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and work on those trees and I want to get those trees in and done. And so I've kind of put them all as one dark, but I'm going to come back now and I'm going to make some of them cooler and lighter and push them back like they're further away. So they're less green. And um, I'm looking at my photo reference as I do this. Again, I don't want everything spaced 
you know, one, two, three, four. So I'm, this is where I'm going to come in with these kind of secondary trees and try to make, um, break up that, that uh, wall of trees there and make it interesting. Whoop. And sometimes this is easier, believe it or not, with a lot of paint. So if I really load this up and I have a nice amount of paint on there, sometimes that's easier to lay that down on top of the other paint. And I'm adding a little white to this. I'm going to save my darkest darks for punch toward the end. You'll see that. I took a workshop with Kevin McPherson. And uh, he, he believes, uh, I, if I understood correctly, you should really only have one darkest dark. I, um, I like to use a dark pattern through my paintings, but, you know, he believes strongly enough in it that, um, you know, you should just have, he believes you should have one really strong, dark, dark. And he knows what he's talking about. Let's see, I'm just going to add a little interest to this tree. Kind of a big brush and going fast, so... Maybe I could do better at that. Well, if he's getting quiet, he must be thinking. You guys doing all right? So what'd you think about my, uh, my son's idea of me starting with a, starting the painting and just drink wine throughout and see how I do. No comments. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Although I like his creativity. Okay, so I've got some of those bluer violet trees back in there. Now I'm going to start to add some yellows to that and, and start to talk about those trees that are a little bit closer to me here. And um, they're, they're dark, but you start to see reds and all sorts of colors in here. So Phil, that worked for you in grad school, huh? Opening, uh, yeah, as long as you didn't drain the bottle. So it's all in moderation, I guess. If I have a glass of wine, I know I'll be fine. If I have a couple of old fashions, then then we're really having a party. And Dana, you have experience in this, huh? Yeah. You know what? Maybe we all do it, and then it doesn't matter, right? We're, we... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun. Nobody would know the difference. Until I watch the YouTube video. Um, okay. Got to focus here, Scott. So I've got the dark of the tree, and I'm adding some lighter, warmer notes here. And I don't want to... Um, honestly, I can't even see the photo reference very well at this point. It's so small on my screen. So... Um, I'm not trying to copy those trees. I'm just trying to give them form. So I've got the deep dark I put down first. That's going to be the inner side or the innermost area of the tree, um, you know, where the light isn't getting to. Then you've got the branches that come to the outside. And um, those are getting lighter. So I'm, I'm putting a little bit of those in here. And I'm going to try to make each tree just, you know, a little bit interesting more interesting or different than the one next to it. You know, you can make a nice green, by the way. I'm not going to do it right now, but um, this chromatic black over here, if you add chromatic black to yellow ochre, you get a really rich green. 
you know, a green that, that feels um, like the dry pine needles here in the west. So that's kind of cool. And all of these trees don't need to have the light on them. In fact, maybe this, what I'll do is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try some, I'll, I'll show you in a second here. <laughs> okay, now I've just got these kind of cone shapes. And I think I'm going to go in and make, I'm going to modify, I keep building from this same pile, but I have enough paint down that I need to kind of change that a little bit. So I'm going to mix off to the side here and get some green. And I uh, kind of like a little bit of the green here. I really like painting trees. I think I'm getting the habit of it. Um, you know, getting the feel for making more of a, oh, I would say a, a shorthand tree that represents my style. And sometimes those little lyrical brush strokes are, uh, man, they mean everything. They're really fun to look at. You know, you go and you look at masters at this, like Sargent's work, and uh, it's really fantastic. Amazing. Okay, so this tree in the foreground, I think, um, what am I going to do here? What kind of trees do I have in my reference? Again, I can't really tell so much. So I think I'm going to put a lighter mixture here. It's got more blue. I'm going to call this, well, it's in the shadow. So I'm going with the blue. And it's going to, it's not only a bigger shape in front of these other ones, but I think it will it will also, um, the colors here will set it apart. I'm lucky I have a big blue, blue spruce tree in my backyard here, right out my window of my studio. So whenever I get a little perplexed, I, I'll go have a look at that. I planted it when it was just a baby. You know, the other thing when you're painting a pine tree, you know, you're looking, you're, you're, um, your eye is at this level, right? So anything when you're looking up at the top of the tree, you're, you're looking at branches, you're looking at the underside of the branches as they go up, and they're a different color. And uh, as you look down, then you start to see, or eye level, you're starting to see the tip of the branches right at your eye level. And as you look down, you're starting to see... Um, you know, the boughs as they're laying, you're looking down on the boughs as they're laying in the snow. So keep that in mind. It's linear perspective, basically. And it applies to everything, but we typically think of buildings and roads and stuff like that for linear perspective. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Um, I've got more work to do for sure, but I've got some variety there I'm assessing and I need some more paper towels okay all right I think we're on track here oops I bumped my camera sorry okay let's see so I think um, I'm going to wipe a little of this excess paint off of my brush, my dark color tree brush. And then I'm going to, um, somewhere over here, go with a darker violet and get this tree on my left. I want that to be more purple. And, you know, um, one thing that was difficult for me to kind of learn was to not be afraid of having my uh, a shape go off the edge of the canvas here. Um, you know, it's, it's okay to have that, and it's preferable, actually. If you have everything, every shape contained within the four edges of your canvas, then it's going to be really pretty boring. All right, well, that's that's starting to look pretty good there. 
I need to decide if I want this tree in front of these shrubs or behind it. I think I might just bring it right down. I don't know, that kind of wraps them up too much. I don't know, I might change that. Okay, now, what do I wanna do next? Um, I think I'm gonna save the water, probably mostly for the last, and I'm gonna put in some darks right now for the water, uh, on the water's edge, I should say. I need a little more room here. I can use the same yeah, I can use the same brush. But at the water's edge, you get a really nice dark. And I can use some of this, uh, oh, uh, what is that? I don't think it's transparent red oxide tonight. I think it's more of a an ochre or a, a burnt sienna or a burnt umber probably. Um, I'm going to whiten it a little bit here because I, I want to save the darkest darks for a few of the accent highlights. But it's typically a warm dark right at the water's edge is what I've noticed. This stuff is, uh, this is the kind of thing you only learn from uh, being out there. So really, uh, I can't tell you or stress enough the value of going out and, and seeing these things. Okay, so I've got, got this edge here. I want it to be, there's a nice brush stroke there. I can see the edge here, but then this plane of snow is not um, really showing me much of an edge. I twisted my brush as I made that. So with one stroke, I have what I think is a pretty nice looking uh, line, has some energy to it. And I'm just going to go ahead right now and put the darks in on those rocks because I know I'm going to need that and that color is going to work for me. Where else do I have some of these? Okay, so as I go back, I'm going to lighten this and add a little more blue to that mixture. But this shoreline is probably pretty dark here. Actually, I need to make it darker because my shadow from the trees is so dark. I need it to stand out. Go with a little bit more of the lizard permanent in there. Look at my reference again. So let's see, I've got... Oh, there's a magic piece going to come up here pretty soon where I put the reflection of the of the uh, snow banks in the water too. That's kind of a cool, cool thing to do. All right, well, I tell you what, I'm gonna just keep this, those lines pretty generic right there. That's a good start. And let's see. Might work on this snow a little bit more. Actually, I think what I'm going to do while I have it is I'm going to work on, uh, I'm just going to get these rocks in the right, right color from the start here. So it's, um, what is that? Kind of a, the colors I see in the reference photo aren't this warm. Um, but they have a little bit of warmth in them. So I see some ochre and some umber. And it's a dark value. Put a little blue in there. I don't know if that's the right value. Um, yeah, it might go a little darker there. Okay, so my shape kind of drew that in, and then I've obliterated it. That's all right. Kind of comes down here. And maybe on the back side of this, I've got a little bit of the more violet look to it. Do the same thing here, a little rock there and a little rock there. And then as we come around to the top of it, it gets a little lighter and maybe warmer there. And I'm being pretty just general with that. Just general observations about rocks. 
maybe a little pop of red in there too to warm it warm it up on one side but every time you change direction the plane changes try to look for a different color you can put there and it just gives your viewer the um, you know a little more clarity about that this form is changing direction and it's picking up different light and then once you kind of know how that's working it really helps to be able to um, helps us be able to make up scenarios and environments um, from how we know you know from knowing that how light uh, the properties of light fall on an object and describe form all right so those are pretty good I like that but I want a little bit of different color kind of on on the side there all right and these rocks it looks like there's a really dark shadow down in there might come back and put that on later I can lay a little bit of it in right now but um, what happens is the rock obscures the reflection and so when you are painting water and the rock obscures the reflection, that allows you to see down into the water because you don't have that reflection impeding your, your view down into the water. Okay. Any questions? Hey, I'm open to ideas on, um, you know, I was thinking... I may not always do a full painting in a night. Maybe um, if there's any concepts that you'd want me to go more in depth on, um, I'd be open to hearing your thoughts and ideas on that. But thank you. Um, some of you have just reached out directly in email with some really nice feedback, and I I take that... Uh, to heart so I really appreciate that that you're enjoying this and you think I'm doing okay with teaching so I'm not trained as a teacher and I appreciate the support faux show okay um, so what I remember I said earlier that your darker or your light <laughs> Shapes that are light or uh, items that are light above the water are going to reflect, but when they reflect, they're going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go a little darker with this color here that I know my snow is, and I'm going to put in the reflection of the snow here. And it's not quite the right color. But it doesn't have to be the exact color, but it is, it is going to be darker. So I'm just going to get some of that in here. And this is what really starts to make the whole thing kind of make sense and come to life. And it's probably a softer edge here as it goes into the water. So I'm going to drag. I just did one brush stroke that kind of, you know, uh, straddled both of the shapes there, the light of the snow and then uh, uh, the dark of the tree. Likewise, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just try to put some of that over the over the dark I put down on that water that's way back there. See what I can get away with. And let's see, I have a little bit of that reflection in the foreground here that I wanted to put in, although you don't really see that in my reference. I'm honestly making that up because I really like the look of this. That cast, or that reflected edge in the water here in the foreground. Really like that. It just, it just adds so much. Um, I don't know, just another layer of visual interest for me. Hopefully that's reading in the, 
it's funny um, when I take the when I take a decent picture of these they they really look quite a bit different sometimes and um, most of that is the the elimination of glare um, and a, a more accurate I think my camera has a better shot um, what you're looking at right now is just straight through the camera it's it's not recording video but it's in that mode but then when I later will take a picture um, you get you get kind of a different um, feel, I think, for some of these um, values and stuff in the final picture. So not all of the difference is something that I, I actually did later. It's a difference in the, um, in the camera equipment. Okay, so um, I'm envisioning the snowbank curving, and um, as it's curving, it's changing the value here. And so on that edge, that lip, if I put a different color here, I'm starting to get a rounding of form. I did a little bit here. I don't have to go crazy on this either to get it. Um, oh, bump my mic. Now I'm going to come over here and kind of awkward. But I, I just pulled, I took my brush, loaded on this end, and I wanted the stroke of paint to just kind of... Um, fade away. So if I start with the loaded brush where I want the most paint and then I lightly drag it away, I get that nice subtle, subtle, soft falling off of the paint stroke. I can do that one time and that is as descriptive as I needed it to be. I can also put other little dips of this into there as well, uh, into the, the body of the snow here to give an indication of, um, you know, little dips and stuff or animal tracks or something that aren't picking up the light the same way. So I'm going to do a little bit of that because it, as this shape goes into space, it's picking up more of the, well, it's picking up a different portion of the sky. So I've made all of this shape orange. I'm going to come into that now and I'm going to start to add some blue. <coughs> And that blue will help kind of define um, some things. Now that, that uh, orange paint set up really well. So I'm going to go in with my palette knife and smooth some of that out. Because it, it really set up. And it's causing the blue paint that I'm putting down to just... Um, I'm going to get rid of that little grass I put in there because it's just messing up my paint colors. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little more saucy paint to this. I'm putting more medium in it so I get a nice, um, you know, kind of a luscious brush stroke here. And so I'm adding, what am I doing here? I'm adding blue and I'm lightening it. And um, I'm putting some nice juicy brush strokes on there. And um, what I'm trying to do then is just indicate how this form's moving. And so now I'm going to go back with the orange into that. So I'm I had to make my mixture a little more. Um, saucier I guess <laughs> and uh, so that I can I scraped that thick paint off it left a, a you know a nice bed of it but now I'm kind of making this mixture more medium heavy so I can um, I can integrate it with the blue I just put down and I get the effect that I want here hopefully and that's a little more pink than orange which isn't bad but not quite ready for that. So I'm getting these. Uh, this is an opportunity to take and put some nice brush strokes down and just leave them. And that looks pretty good. I like that. It's a little dark, so I'm going to lighten it up a hair. 
just not much. And I'm going to leave this foreground here. And I might come in and, and do a little of those pinks now. What the heck? So, okay, the title of the thing was of this video is, um, you know, Painting Colorful Snow. So let's take a minute and just kind of reflect on that. I really don't have any um, white snow, pure white snow. I'm playing with color. I'm changing the color as the form changes, right? And um, so like right now, I'm, I'm changing the color of the snow a bit to this um, alizarin permanent violet as it... Um, as that snow bank co co um, yeah, curves off to the right here. And then when you look at that, I mean, you're going to read it as snow, but all of a sudden it's a lot more fun to look at, I think. Okay, so let's go back here and kind of define these shapes. Well, there's Hershey barking, sorry. Just the way it is. He's a good dog. <laughs> Every week there's going to be a challenge. I think it's just my test of endurance. I'm going to beat it. Not the dog. The challenges. All right. Okay, I'm liking this. So, you know, look at the pattern now. I've got a nice line of darks coming down here. I enjoy the pattern. It's, it's very uh, rudimentary, kind of blocky. And, um, but you know what? It's got the good bones of um, a strong painting, uh, shape-wise, value-wise, all of that. So that's what matters. Put a little bit of a light there. You know, and actually I could stop here and you would have, this is basically the painting, right? So at this point, I've got the light and the dark patterns in. I've got my value ranges accurate. And now it's just a refinement of these shapes and adding little, little cues, little sparkles, all the kind of stuff that I would want in there. So um, I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and work on the... Um, reflected tree shapes a bit here. And it kind of helps sometimes to look at that reference. I see a lot of color in those shadows, so I can really have some fun in here. If you look in my photo reference, um, I can't really tell what it is right now because I it's so small. But I see little dots of color and stuff. Maybe that's actually a, an advantage that I'll have. Um, let's see. So this tree, I think, actually is going to need to come out a little bit more. The shape in the water just to align with, with what I've got here. And I can just load up several colors on the brush and just wiggle that brush around and make kind of a fun, fun line there too. And that's what happens. You get little ripples and stuff with the water and lots of fun stuff you can mess around with. I think for, for me, if I, if I try to overthink the water, that's when I get into trouble. When I start painting water instead of those nice little shapes in the water. So remember, my darks get a little bit lighter. So I'm doing that. Trying to stick to that, variegating the colors. And all of that good stuff. And then pretty soon, either, either it starts to look like water or I really start to believe it's looking like water. You tell me. Now it starts to look like water. Just kidding. All right, 
hope my sense of humor is all right for y'all because I can't change that. Cat's asking, um, is the snow on the tree tips going to come into play? What kind of colors would that snow be? Yeah, good question. Um, the snow on the trees is a tricky thing because I like to have it in there, but too many dots of that light of color can ruin the value shape. You break up the value mass. If I put a bunch of white dots and, and a bunch of snow in here, um, I can really ruin that effect of a, a mass solid tree. I like the snow in there and I just have to put that in in such a way that it's more of patterns of bigger, bigger blocks or pieces of paint. Um, and then as far as the color, it's going to be the same colors in here. You just got to think, is that snow that I'm putting in now going to be reflecting any light or picking up reflected light from the tree, which might be more of a green hue? Um, and then what areas of the tree might be receiving some more of that light from the sky that would kind of be more of the, the you know, the brighter side of the snow? Okay, so I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of, I'm not going to put a lot of effort into, um, well, I shouldn't say effort. I'm not going to put a lot of detail into some of these reflections here because I just don't want it. But I am going to put a few verticals in here that, uh, where I think my shapes aren't quite what they need to be. How are we doing on time? We're doing, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. About the same. Now I can go in with this darker color here and cut into and uh, refine some of these reflection shapes that are in there. That's okay. I can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So the reflection in the foreground here of the tree was a little bit darker and warmer, more on that green side. And um, so I can add some darks in here, closer to the shore. Okay, that water looks pretty good to me. Um, and I'll noodle a little bit here. Get me some paint here on the, the shapes within the water, so. Of the light, the light side. Looks pretty good. Now I'm looking at the, the reference, my reference photo, and I notice that it's really light, the, the sky gets really light, like up here. So I'm gonna lighten this a little bit. And then the chroma increases. You see more of the blue of the zenith as you get closer. So I'm gonna replicate that here. And again, um, so anytime you have a big, a big mass of, uh, of a shape, like a snowbank or whatever it is here, I don't want to lose my chroma here. That's that's actually a good point. I don't want to get so white here that I don't have the chroma. So I added it in some yellow here. We'll see how that works. But anyway, when you when you ever whenever you have a large shape like this, you know, try to think of the the transition of um, try to do a a transition from light to dark or one color to another. Uh, that adds a lot of interest. Um, to to something that if you don't have it's going to get a little bit boring Let's see. What do I got here? I think I'll come in and Do that I Need a little more orange So I'm trying to just go into my CAD yellow medium here And my orange and make that color and now I'm going to load it up because I kind of want to, um, I'm just not quite as chroma, chromatic as I want it yet. I'm going to load that up because I want to 
carve into those tree shapes a little bit here now. Uh, okay, nice juicy brush stroke there. If you could see this in person, I, it's got it's picking up various colors. It's thick. Um, I like it. I like it. So I'm going to try to just put a little bit of an indication here. And I think I can pull that off. Sometimes a little bit of light like that might not might not have enough context to where you could your viewer says, "Oh, I know what that is." But in this case, I think I think that's pretty clear what I'm trying to do, or what that shape is. And these are just pieces of paint right now. I'm really laying on thick paint right on top. Not only does it help me lay down the paint, but it really makes a fun surface to look at. Yeah, I like that. The colors in the video, at least what I'm seeing, are seem a little bit off. I don't know. It's always my eye. Okay, so as I go down a little further, I'm getting further over to the red and the orange. And it's getting more vibrant. So not only am I adding color to uh, the snow, but look at all this great color everywhere. And that's what makes the... You know, you can't just put color in the snow and leave it because then it appears, um, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in, right? Because there's so much reflected light everywhere else. You have to, you have to have, um, a little bit of that light, that color echoing everywhere for it to make sense. So the sky is reflecting on the snow, it, the, it's reflecting in the water. You have those colors showing up everywhere. And now I'm just really enjoying putting chunky marks of paint down. This is what um, people like to look at. I know I like to look at it. You know, some, some painters in history paint in a technique that's you can barely notice the brush strokes. You're not even sure how it was really made, and that's okay. I like the, some of those paintings as well, but um, I really want, yeah. I, I, I just I like something that's kind of fun to look at, and and this is fun for me to look at. And I'm I'm putting some of these brush strokes in into the orange. I'm just having fun with it. Now I'm going to carve that rock. Put a big brush stroke there. Got the dog raking at the door. Anybody else have dogs? Cat, I think you do. I know. Dana, Phil, any dogs? Or cats, what's your pet of choice? And I'm just making sure I've got my my trees lined up here. Well, let's see here. Cat Scooter Boy. I like that, Dana. We have a couple of cats, had a couple of cats. We lost one this year, unfortunately, but our cats and dog peacefully coexisted for lots of years. They sure are nice to have pets, though, aren't they? What would we do without them? 
including the one that's raking at the door to get into my studio right now. Okay, I picked up a little bit of dirty color there from the rock, I guess. Uh, I think I'm just going to have to <clears throat> paint over it and kind of integrate it, absorb that into the other colors around there. That's fine. All right, that water looks really cool. Very um, abstracted and... Um, it, it changes in tone and value, and I'm going to leave it alone. Cat's dog is sleeping by the sofa, comforted to sleep by my calm, soothing voice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, putting people to sleep since 1971. Okay. Um, we're getting close, folks. I think you can see it here. Like I said, I'll probably work on the shapes and edges here more uh, post-recording. But um, if you want to stick with me here for a little bit, I will do some of that in the sky now. Now, one thing I want to do that I liked is uh, I went a little more yellow and lighter right at that horizon line there. So that again that really is a nice way to um, reinforce the effect of light uh, as you get to the horizon a lot of times that's most definitely a lighter shape and again I can go in with nice thick paint here and just really lay it on why not We'll just make this a frosting, frosting painting. I, yeah, I really, I gotta say, I'm kind of liking this one. Don't mess it up. Well, if there's one thing you're picking up from me is I'm not afraid to try different things. I guess I've learned that you can always fix, always fix all this stuff, so... Don't let the fear get in the way of trying different things. You can do it. Um, as I'm painting these, I'm wiping my brush off in between strokes so that as I pick up some of the dark colors from the trees, I'm uh, not contaminating my pile. Now I have this some thick paint I put on originally, I can just go in and grab some of that and use it to carve out some of the tree shapes here that I want. I don't want Dr. Seuss trees though, so I gotta watch that. Nothing wrong with Dr. Seuss, just not what I'm going for. What was that, a tuffle of tree? Tuffle of trees? Gosh. My youngest is 18, or, yeah, 18, and um, she, uh, wait, <laughs> she's 19, I'm sorry, I'm old, hence why I forget, um, but, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I was reading Dr. Seuss, so. Truffula, truffula trees. Cat, you're so good. You know all this stuff. Yeah, I used to love reading stories at night. Highlight of the day. Doing different voices. Now I just do that for Hershey. He looks at me like I'm crazy. You know, I gotta say, I did never imagined I would just sit here and talk to people I've not met and share stories like that so it's an interesting dynamic kind of fun we should have a meetup sometime all right <laughs> cat's been speaking for the trees for 35 years you're only 36 aren't you come on
All right, so what I've done here is I've gotten, um, yeah, what have I done here? I'm, I kind of have a, a little bit of a muddied puddle. It's not as clean of a mixture here as I wanted originally. That's all right, though. Just add a little more white here. I've used a lot of white, so, you know, that is one color I'm pretty good about putting enough out because I know I use a lot of that. Especially in a snow scene, right? It's just bound to happen. But um, alizarin permanent here, alizarin crimson, has a smoky hue to it, I think is the right way to put it. Um, if you wanted a really bright replacement for that or alternative, I sometimes I'll use quinacridone red. And um, it will give me a much brighter... Um, you know, version of that color, which I like sometimes. So I will use quinacridone, just quinacridone red. There's quinacridone magenta and a bunch of different quinacridones. But that's a trick to, um, yeah, to just have, have that in your back pocket if you really want, you know, really vibrant purples or you need need a um, just a cleaner version of alizarin permanent okay so see how i'm shaping that tree right there by painting the negative side of the sky and i really like how that looks it just gives that tree that shape right there is really pleasing to me it gives gives the tree some more character okay what else should i do here why don't we so what I'll need to do off camera is I will refine these trees because they, they're a back and forth. They require some additional work. And, um, but let's pop a little snow on one of them and just see what that does, Kat, so you can, well, for all of you, just see what I would kind of do there. Um, yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you'll see that snow on these lower branches here um, where it's collected a little bit. I mean, I got to give this some thought, really, because once I put white into this shape, I'm kind of committed, right? So, work up my courage. Should I have made that old-fashioned? This would have been a lot more uh, fun for you guys to watch. Okay, no, in all seriousness, though, um, yeah, so maybe I will do like a snow shape here and see I just kind of laid some paint on there I, I gotta get in and get out quick because it is um, picking up the snow or I'm sorry picking up the green of the tree into the snow piece and you know I could maybe put a little bit here and I kind of like them to just have this lyrical dance of the snow shapes, you know, kind of like, so when I talk about that, like I have this curve here, I think that brings you up into here, which brings you around into here and maybe back down into here. All of these kind of shapes they interact together and uh, lead you around the painting and make it fun to explore, I think. And so I like to do the same thing when I design the shapes of snow. Okay, so that I would say, and you can get away with describing form a lot of times with just two values, a light and a dark. If you have a light and a dark and you put the mid-tone in between those, then you, you can always describe form. If you get those value changes and temperature changes correct, um, you can always describe the form. So a light, a dark, the light side, the dark side, and... Um, and you're good to go. So uh, I was just thinking here in the meantime that this snow, the light side of it, the snow in the branches here, I'll put a little bit of that on and you'll see how that kind of picks up. I don't know if you can really see that too much in the video, honestly. And then you could you could take a little bit of that 
sky color. Maybe put a bit of that on the top. And especially in areas where the snow is gonna be catching some of that light. I'm gonna put a little bit of that lighter color on the top of these trees here too because um, that helps these sit up and in front of the trees behind them. It just adds a bunch of color there. I'm just dragging this actually, kind of like mimicking some branches. Just that little bit there kind of gives some shape to those little potatoes. Hey, Zoe's joining too. Welcome, Zoe. Good to have you. Yeah, Deb, you like how, uh, how I cut back into the trees. Yeah, I do too. There, that negative shape painting is really um, exciting. It's sculptural. I enjoy it. Okay, um, so I think at this stage I look and I say, uh, do I have any areas that I need to pop some darks into? Um, is there anything I haven't described enough? And... Um, just looking at this, I think that, oh, you know, one thing, yeah, so I think, actually, let me finish that thought. Come on, Scott, focus. So I'm going to go in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put a couple of nice darks in here, but where do I want them? You know, I kind of like the idea of one right there. This, um, the spot between an object and the shadow it casts can be really dark, and that's called the occlusion shadow and that's the area where it's not the the object isn't allowing any light into that space and it's tucked away deep enough that there's no reflected light from around there uh, that's being uh, reflected into that and that's called again the occlusion shadow so I put a little bit of that right here and that helps to define that rock I'm going to drag a little bit of that cool or dark. I got I totally grabbed the wrong brush. Okay, well, I will shape this rock probably separately if I can find that color again. It's right here, I guess. There we are. I just wanted to round that a little bit. And I want it to be just a little bit darker at the bottom there. And there we go. So, uh, one thing I've been meaning to tell you guys about, and I haven't, because I've done it afterward when I finish the paintings, is using a scraper tool. Um, this is a brush I cut the back off just because I needed a short brush for a backpack. And then I sharpened it, um, probably in a pencil sharpener, maybe even with a razor blade. But you can use something like this. I use it to sign a lot in the field. But you can also, um, you know, there's there's... You, you can draw in, um, you know, little shrubs and trees and all sorts of scraggly things that add realism uh, to your painting here that you can't get with a brush. And so that's kind of cool. I mean, I can even put in, um, you know, like a, a tree in the background here or something that, that might be like a dead aspen. And then I can integrate that in in a little bit here by doing, you know, painting into the tree. But these little, you know, these little marks and stuff just make things look wild and natural. You get some of that stuff. And um, so that's a good tool to go back in. You can also use just the, the back side of your paintbrush. So I'll work on some edges offline. Um, I will soften some things in the, you know, as I go further back, I might rough some edges up. Um, I'm just going to play around until I get the feel that I'm looking for. I like using the palette knife loaded up here, if you can see that. Nice bead of paint. And, um, you know, not being afraid to, 
to put some of that down. That's kind of fun. I don't want it to be too mechanical, so I'll usually put it down and then maybe take some of that off. Maybe go back in with the, bre the brush and uh, tickle an edge there, soften it. Um, you know, I might bring some of this sky down into the shape of the mountains there. That could be interesting. I don't know. It's just little things like that. I try and I say, well, you know, is that something that adds value or not? Does that make it look better or not? So just to recap and we'll wrap up here. Um, it's got really strong abstract graphic shapes to it. The value difference is very strong. I'm using a full value. I'm not going clear to white, honestly, I guess, but uh, very light and I've got dark darks. And uh, I've really loaded it up with color. I've looked for opportunities where I could boost that color and, um, you know, make it a, a new scene. The, the reference photo is cool, but um, this looks like a little jeweled patchwork of brush strokes of, of neat color. And you still get, you know what it is, but all of a sudden it's more of artwork um, to enjoy rather than just, you know, the photograph that I could take. Now, if I were a professional photographer, I could make that photo a lot better, but I'm not. So um, this is my way to, to kind of enhance what I see out there and make a fun painting. Um, all right, guys, I'm not going to go back on camera because I don't think I need to. Thank you all for joining tonight. I really appreciate you. And this is fun. I think, what is this, the fifth one? I sold one of these paintings, so that's great because, um, you know, then that pays me. <laughs> but uh, that was nice. I, I did get a sale off one of the snow scenes that I had done. And um, I like, this is making me paint, and I'm getting to hang out with you all. And I hope you guys are adding or getting feel like this is adding value for you. So leave me some comments. Um, I've got other videos out there. If you're looking for something in particular, I'm building a, you know, a library of them every week here. So I've also got some that I didn't do live stream. And, um, you know, on, on other topics, I have some about the business of art, the business side. If you're interested in that, I'll uh, do those as more of a, a vlog stand uh, or a vlog format rather. And... Yeah, so Deb, you're welcome. Thank you for joining and spending an hour and a half with me. I appreciate it. So I plan to be here next Tuesday as well, and um, we'll wrap it up there. I'll, in a couple of days, probably get a photograph of this in decent light and post it up. This one will take a long time to dry because it's got a lot of white in it, but I'll try to get a, a photograph here and put it up online so you can see kind of a more accurate representation of the finished painting. Thanks, everybody. Hey, have a great week ahead, and I uh, wish you all the best. Bye-bye.